Right, hi everyone. Um, hope you're still keeping sane. Uh, hopefully we will be out fishing again soon. Fingers crossed. Um, moving on from casters and maggots shallow, we're going to go on to pellets shallow today. Um, bit different with pellets. Generally I'd be fishing for carp. I'm not saying you don't catch F1s on it, but for me maggots and casters are better for those. Uh, so it's mainly carp. The approach is a bit different when we're fishing just solely for carp. Um, so we'll get on to that. Uh, when, first of all, when would we fish pellets shallow? I will cover fishing on the deck as well. It's all, it'll all go as one. Uh, for carp, um, well, any time they're responding to a bit of feed, really. Um, it's a method that it makes a bit of noise. It does draw fish in. You're building the peg up as the day goes on because obviously your pellets are sinking to the bottom, what's not been eaten. Um, and it's not going to be like when you're feeding mags and casters, they're not generally so manic, so there is going to be a bit of bait going to the bottom, so you do need to target the bottom during the day as well. Um, much like when you're fishing uh, the pellet waggly and fish a bomb underneath it later on in the day when they rock up. So it's uh, another pretty simple method, but there are a few different tips for it, so we'll get straight into it. Um, as always, we'll start with the rigs. Um, I'll talk about on the bottom first. Uh, because we're trying to emulate the bait falling, I do like a light float, if possible. Um, carbon stem so we can hold it, hold the float tight, so it goes through the water and we can see bites as it goes down, helps slow the fall of the bait. So it's a, Root carbon, two mil tip, nice thick tip, like I use for all my summer fishing. Uh, carbon stem, as I say, this is a 4B12, which if you're fishing in like five foot, five, six foot or under, is my ideal size conditions. I might have to step up, but that is the go to if I can. Um, starting at the elastic, no messing around. Uh, it's a 16 to 18 the green slip, slick, um, which is what I like for all my deck fishing for carp in the summer. It's really soft still. The size, as with all slicks, is a bit different. So there's plenty of stretch there, so the fish leave the peg nice and quiet. Um, but it does power up really well. So you are looking to catch some big fish and big weights on this. So, so you don't want to be wasting too much time playing them. Uh, there isn't a back shot on it, but there would always be a number eight back shot just to help with steadying the rig, keeping the, it helps keep the rig in place with a lighter flow. Um, shotting's really simple. Main line is 020 as with all my carp fishing in the summer, as I've already touched on. Um, and then it's just a strong number 11s on this, all the way down the rig. Um, like I say, if I stepped up, if the conditions weren't so good, I'd step up to a 414 float, and then if, even worse, I'd step up to a wire stem, so it just holds a bit better. I would move the shot down into the bottom half of the rig, like a, a strong bulk as such, just so I've got a bit more control over it, and same in deeper water. Moves down to, I'll take that off there, six inch hook length, um, just so I've got a shot quite near the hook. I am fishing on the deck. I would want a bit of control over it. Um, hook length is 018. And the hook is uh, just a 16 and medium. It's probably quite a strong hook. Obviously, I'm fishing heavy gear. 018 bottom, 16 hook, and a band. I like the band quite close to the hook um, for fishing 6mm pellets, which is what I would generally be doing with this. I don't bother with fours unless I'm F1 fishing, but then it's all a little bit different. Um, not something I do very often because I'd rather fish maggots and testers. Uh, so that's the deck covered. We'll go the other way then, we'll start at the top then. Um, with pellets, let's say we're fishing for big carp, it's, they're not, not like they do with maggots and casters, they're not going to sit there, they're just going to mooch in and out the swim. Um, there's not generally going to be so many there. You'll get odd little run where a few come into the peg, you'll catch a few, and then you might wait a bit and it'll be a lot of slapping and, and trying to draw some more in. They're big, wise fish. They're not stupid. 
Um, so the shallowest rig, this is um, one that will see probably the most use during the day. Uh, it's one of the MTD dibbers, not like with maggots and casters, this is a point two. There's a reason for it. Just uh, simply a couple of number 10s under the float. Um, with this, I like a foot hook length. Again, it's the same lines as before, 020 to 018. Foot hook length, carp like to see the bait fall past them. Um, so there's no shot down that, all the shot is under the float. Just a foot hook length, again, 16 and, uh, and a band. The key with this rig is the length of line above the float. Um, I've got three foot here, and it's simply, you're not mugging them, but you are, like I said, there's not gonna be hundreds of fish sat in your feed. So it's gonna be about swinging the rig out um, all around where you're feeding. Um, that's why I use the, the point two instead of a point one. It's just got that bit more weight to flick it around the peg. Um, a six mil pellet landing makes a bigger plot than a maggot or caster. So you're still gonna be making the, the same sort of plot. Um, but it is all about swinging round, slapping, a lot of slap, slapping is brilliant for carp, as, as I'm sure a lot of you know. Um, but the, just a bit bigger float and the longer line, I can, I can work my way around my feed. You might see a swell just swing at it, you might see a fish there, like mugging almost. Um, so that is that covered. Again, really simple rig. Moving down. This is the other rig I would have set up for shallow. Um, so I didn't touch on the elastic. For shallow, it's the 14 to 16 slick, the yellow. Just that bit soft that lets them swim out the peg. You don't want them, don't want to come and be swirling and crashing because it's it's going to slow you down for your next fish. It's, it's scare them out the peg. Um, so the other rig I always set up for shallow fishing on hard pellets is one up two foot deep. Um, bit shorter line on this one because this is purely for slapping and the fish are that little bit deep so they're not going to spook from your pole top so much i want to be a bit more control where, where i'm flicking the rig over all the while and again 020 to 018 another foot hook length on this one just so the bait falls through that that bottom foot um, and then i've almost shot a foot away simply because my the foot rig is going to be fishing where that bulk is so if you're not catching on that you want to be below that you're wasting time if you have all your shot two foot and letting it fall you know the fish aren't in that first foot because you're not catching on the other rig um shotting on this float wise actually sorry is a 0.3 mojo it lifts because of the tapered body it lifts out really well it's not causing much disturbance when you're lifting it out because you're regularly lifting your rig out and slapping and the shotting on this is a bit different um something that works really well for me it's just simply just above my hook length loop there's a couple of number 10 i use for trimming depending on what size pellet i'm using a six or an eight mil and then a little 0.2 olivet which makes a perfect plot it sounds just like a pellet uh very tangle free i don't have it fixed above it just slides down as i'm slapping makes slapping really easy um replicates the sound of the pellet. I've caught a lot, a lot of fish with that rig. Um, lovely, that is it's like my local, where I do a lot of hard pellet fishing purely for carp, float fish farm. That has been the rig for me. Really, really good. Um, the last rig to touch on is, for those waters where are a bit deeper, again, two islands at float fish farm. You're fishing in 12 foot or more on one of the lakes. A lot of shallow fishing on that, so a rig for fishing four or five foot deep can be really good. Uh, same setups again, the yellow slick, 020 to 018. Uh, float is this diamond one, it's a snake two I believe, I always forget the name of this one, in a 414, so I've got a bit of control over it. It's got a little bit of a body, just so you can hold the float, you're going to be leaving that there a little bit longer and just lifting and dropping it. Um, shotting is simply, I work my way up from the bottom when I unhook myself. Um, same hook again, a 16, 18, uh, 018 bottom, just above the foot hook length, a number 10, working up about another 18 inches, 
bulk of number 10s, I can spread them out if, if and when I feel I need to. Um, and that's it, again, I'm getting it past that two foot and then letting it drop the rest of the way. And it's not really slapping with that because it's too deep, it's just regularly lifting and dropping your bait and letting it fall in your pellets you lose feeding. And that is basically rigs. So we'll go through where we would fish this and the, the sort of technique to it, and, and the bait, obviously. Um, onto bait, we're fishing pellets, quite simple. If you've got fish, fishery pellets, so be it. Um, a lot of fisheries, you do have to use them. I'd be looking to fish six mils on the pole. You can fish eight mils as well. Eight mils can be good if small fish are a real problem at the venue you're fishing. Um, worth carrying a bit of pellet oil, I forgot to bring it in, but just if the pellets don't sink as well as you'd like. I actually use the spotted fin, I don't use the pellet oil, I use the salmon oil just because it's something a little bit different, slightly different flavour to it, does the same job. Um, if I can use whatever pellets I like, I would always use the 6mm catalysts, my favourite pellets by a long way, I know lots of people are using them now. Honestly, do think I'd get a few more bites with them. Carp and skimmers love them. You do catch a lot of skimmers with hard pellets. Um, just carry six mils. I do carry a few eights for the hook. They can be really good. Um, like I say, you're feeding sixes and you're catching some some smaller skimmers. It's amazing now what small skimmers can take it. Changing to an eight mil hook bait can be really, really good. Um, the only thing I will say with that is I like to change up to a 14 hook if I'm using uh, 8 mils on the hook. I learned this the hard way last year in the UK, uh, in the commercial champs at uh, Meadowlands, catching lots of little skimmers, pinging pellets, changed to an 8 mil, started catching carp and big skimmers, but I did lose a few. You want a 14 hook and you want to leave um, a bit longer loop, um, a bit longer length of hair before you pellet. it you find with an 8 mil, they seem to, it seems to knock, because it's a big bait, it's knocking against the hook as you're playing fish and losing them. Um, and I did lose quite a few that day, I've not made the mistake again, I've changed to, I've tied some 14s up with a longer hair, um, sadly that did probably cost me winning the commercial champs last year. Um, so I thought about that quite a lot, I went out and tried it a few times, 14 is much better. Um, so the, going into the technique of it all, first thing is the length you want to be fishing away from yourself. Um, because we're fishing for carp and these are often, let's say, spooky fish until they do rock up later on in the day. It's, it's almost mugging them, um, just attracting them with a little bit of feed. Uh, I've lost my, where I was going, sorry, yeah, distance. Uh, we don't want to be doing it too close, 13 metres is minimum for me, 14 and a half is the ideal distance and I would always keep another bit there just so you can go past your feed at times later on in the day or, or when there's fish in to spook off so I would generally fish conditions allowing 14 and a half metres and then I can put the 16 metre bit just to go past my feed at times. Um, you want a decent catapult, everyone has different ones that work for them. Um, it's amazing to be fair. I, I use the catapult I use, I can feed it fine. My wife has a gun with box, it goes everywhere. We get her catapult, a different one out, a uh, different make, and she's accurate with it. It is all about testing what's best for you. That's all I can say. I'm not going to say use this one or that one, it's what works for you. Um, so, process of it all, it's again, really simple method. You're going to ship out, to, say, your 14 metres. Uh, I generally start on, sorry, back the inset, generally start on the, the foot deep one, just if it's nice weather, you, you'll probably see a few carp milling around. A um, couple of feeds, you want to be trying to be accurate as always, as accurate as you can at the end of your pole. You never want to go past your end of your pole. If you're going to aim anywhere, you want to be slightly short because then the fish have got to come to you. If you feed past your pole, you're not going to get your bait to them very well. Um, you, and then it'll just be the first hour of a match would generally be swinging my rig round my feed, feed a couple of times as always, make a bit of noise, like five pellets, five pellets, swing your baits, do a bit of slapping, then feed again. It's, it's all just about working out what the fish want on the day, but 
generally it's feed twice, do a bit of slapping, feed again. You don't just want to sit there slapping the water to a foam all day. Um, there are some people that do that without feeding the thing, just sit there slapping all day. Personally, it can work at times, but it's not for me. I like to be feeding some bait. Um, if I'm not getting signs on this, I'd obviously try the two foot rig. And then I'd try on the deck. The deck can be good early on for a couple of fish. So if you don't get a bite really pretty quickly, shallow, I would drop down on the deck and then read your line bites, see what's happening and work your way up uh, as and when to different to how you what bites you're getting um, and then later on in the day where there's been you've been building up some bait the fish are gonna uh, rock up on it um, can be a nightmare depends on the venue and how many fish are in front of you uh, obviously the light rig holding it through on the pole is the perfect way but some venues like beastie at decoy they can just all of a sudden you can have a stupid amount of fish in front of you. I know Lindome's the same uh, on bonsai and stuff. And then what you need to do then, the other item of tackle you want to have set up is a little bomb rod. Um, I just use uh, the nine foot, the Matrix, the Horizon Cup, the little nine footer, uh, 3,000 reel, eight pound Horizon line on it. No messing around, you're only, not, you're only going to be fishing 14 metres, you want some strong gear because your bites are going to be absolutely savage. Um, I haven't actually got it on here at the moment, but uh, just a 20 gram inline feeder with a last if I can, foot hook length, down to like a 12 or something like that. Um, and I'd, I'd always put an 8 mil on there just as a bit of a standout bait. Um, and just underarm and not on your pole line, the last hour can be absolutely deadly. Um, I don't really think there's a lot else to cover with it. It is a simple method, as I say, but it is deadly. Fish always eat pellets. Uh, the other thing I could cover probably is fishing across on a like on a more snaky lake where you could get up to an island. Again, same rig supply. I don't find it works for me in really shallow water. So, like like we covered in the mud line. I'd rather fish other baits like like the ground bait and the micros like I covered on that video. But for if you've got a bit deeper water over two foot plus, yes, can be really good. I'd still use the sort of 4B12, the Rube carbon, because I'd look at fish through the water just pinging a few pellets across. As I say, always six mils. You can do it with four mils for, for F1s. I know some people do really well with pellet fishing for F1s. It's just, there's other baits I'd rather use, but if if the venue you fish responds to hard pellets for F1s and stuff, yeah, just swap down to a four mil. Uh, again, fishing a slightly bigger hook bait, a six mil can work really well with it. Uh, obviously scale down your tackle slightly, but the rigs would still be the same. And I think that is all hard pellet fishing I can think of for you. If there's anything you I have missed, just uh, drop me a message and I'll try and cover it. Let me know what videos you want to do next and uh, stay safe. See you soon.